This time on Pedalbox, join us as we go back in time and look at some classic metal at Radwood at Vista Heritage. Welcome back to our videos from Radwood 2023. If you haven't already, go and check out part one with the link in the corner. Radwood celebrates all things 80s and 90s, and people are encouraged to dress up in the theme of that era, which a number of people did with great effect. There was even a Sinclair C5 in attendance, the absolute zenith of personal transportation for the future, or so we were told. Looking absolutely resplendent in white with a factory body kit, white wheels and a pair of Heller lamps up front, this Sirocco is so clean, inside and out with a white steering wheel to boot and even has white striping added over the rear lights under what is still one of the best looking spoilers of all time. As this is a 1990 model compared to the one in our previous video, this model doesn't have the script underneath the spoiler that says Sirocco as that was discontinued in 1984. One of only a couple of American cars on the display is this 1989 Chevrolet Corvette. I know technically the Corvette is presented as its own brand, but it's clearly got a Chevy engine in here, so I'm going to stick with it. Let me know in the comments, do you just lump them in with Chevrolet, or do you treat it exclusively as its own brand? Somewhere in the back of my mind, I've always remembered that the headlights on this car loop around 180 degrees rather than just popping up from the bodywork but seeing them upside down with the bonnet lifted really made me do a double take. Not least because I also forgot they actually mount to the bonnet and not the body. And now going way back to the other end of the engine spectrum, this Metro 1.1 looks splendid nonetheless in this striking and basically perfect blue bodywork. I love this colour and set off against the white alloys and a few other subtle changes in appearance, it looks great. And while it might not be the GTI, 5 spoke compomotives look good on anything. Especially with these turbine covers on the back. This one even has a lot of dealer memorabilia inside the damn near perfect interior. And next door to it, the Metro theme continues with this early MG Metro 1300. Whereas the previous one had the newer K series engine, this has the original A series in its largest iteration and one of the higher powered non turbo geysers this ever came in. I think the unwritten rule here that BBS wheels make everything look better still holds true here with the gold wheels looking great against the red paint of this early MG. The Nissan Figaro always feels like it should be a lot older than it really is and I guess that's kind of the point in this one year only product from Nissan from 1991. But I was surprised to find out that it's also got a turbo 1 litre engine, although that 3 speed auto box really hampers what little performance it has to give. I don't think it's meant to be much of a racer though. And packing the same engine, although without a turbo and predating the Figaro by a few years, is this POW. Now you might have guessed this one isn't quite how it left the factory. Most of these were painted aqua grey, olive grey or ivory, with ivory and black interiors. The purple theme running through this one inside and out with the polished lip wheels really does look great though. These used to be a common sight, now the seemingly ubiquitous Laguna is less common than a 911 in most towns. I always thought this was a good colour though, and it looks great on this super clean bodywork too. And right next door, one of the era's icons. Look up side strikes on Google and the first picture is a Testarossa. A look echoed by so many body kits from Koenig in the late 80s and actually first used on the Ferrari by Koenig in the late 70s, well before the Testarossa came out in 84. The irony of this is on the Koenig Testarossa, this element was something which was completely removed from the styling, leaving gaping intakes for the engine on each door instead of these strakes. The 
the first of the six-cylinder M3s were renowned for having an absurdly long pre-order time in the UK. I heard anecdotally it was in excess of a year to 18 months, and even more if you wanted a cabrio like this one, particularly with the green and tan interior. After the model facelift in 1995, it was available with the first iteration of BMW's SMG automated manual transmission. This one, in that hard to get combination, has a traditional manual opting not to benefit from the super fast gear shift, but having altogether better general road manners for day to day driving. Turbo, it looks even better. Even with the bulky roof folded down and placed on top of the bodywork, I don't think it spoils the look all that much, but that could be the rose tinted glasses talking. And here's something of a rarity, a car that looks good on three-spoke wheels. Saabs always seem to have a knack for pulling off the look. I'm not sure how, I can't put my finger on exactly why they work so well on the 900 and 9000, but they really do. And rounding out a trio of red cars is this 944S2, featuring the larger 3.0-litre four-cylinder as opposed to the 2.5-litre of the previous model. I can't think of a larger four-pot in a production car. If you can, let me know in the comments. This one, like the previous Porsche, has also benefited from a wheel swap featuring five spokes from a 964, much like the red Targa not too far away. And here we have another set of three spoke wheels, but I'm not sure about these ones. Maybe it's just because I'm not a huge fan of the Fiesta overall, but I don't think these work as well as the Saab. With that said, I can't actually picture this Fiesta with anything else other than these three spokes that would work so well. So maybe they are right for the car after all. The Nissan Cherry Europe actually had an Italian cousin, the Alfa Romeo Arna. This is a three-door Cherry, the only one available in Europe, and it's actually the GTI model fitted with the Alfa Romeo 1.5 litre boxer engine from the Alfa Sud, as well as the gearbox and front suspension. There are very few telltale signs that this is the performance model at all, save for a green line around the grille. Next up we have a Ford Escort Estate, which without wanting to disparage it, I have to assume has had some bodywork done, unless it's never touched a wet or salty road and lived in a garage all its life. Complete with a drip rail mount roof track, as was the style at the time, and some nicely sized polished Borbett A's. The Maserati Bi-Turbo came in a lot of variants, and the saloon, as denoted by the 4 in 430, as well as the coupe were all powered by a Bi-Turbo, as the name suggests, V6, ranging from 2 litres up to 2.8 litres, which is in this example denoted by the 30 in 430. The 928 and 968 were Porsche's last front engine layout until the Cayenne. The 964 got the final iteration of the 3 litre inline 4. This club sport version is a really good example of going out on a high. Track focused with most of the luxuries removed, sitting 20mm lower, on bigger, wider wheels with no rear seats, wiper or even an airbag. Thanks very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, we've got one more video from Radwood 2023 to come, so hit the bell and get notified when it comes out. Check out shop.pedalbox.show and patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow to support the channel in a variety of different ways, and once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.